Good morning, everybody. Myself, Parveen Sultana, PGT Physical Science, TSWRX, Nakrekal Girls, Nalgonda District. How are you, girls? Children, can you tell me what is my position? I am in standing position and I am at rest. Now, I am moving, means that I am in motion. Look at this pic. Here you can see in this picture, some people are taking rest. So you can see a man lying on the bed, a old woman sitting on the chair, and a girl is sitting on the floor. On the other part of the picture, you can see a man running, a boy cycling. So some are at rest and some are in motion. What is this rest and motion? Suppose that you are traveling in a bus. When you look through the window, what do you observe? You see all the, all the buildings, trees, people, vehicles, they will be passing by and you feel that you are at rest. And what about the person who is on the road? He also feels the same that you are moving along with the bus. Who is right? Think over it. Okay. Now children, are the walls of your room moving? Can you feel the movement? You know that earth is revolving around the sun. As such, why don't we perceive the motion of the earth directly? To know the answers to these questions, let us move on to our today's topic, motion and time. When do you say a body is in motion? When do you say a body is in motion? When it changes. When the body changes its position with respect to time and observer. When is the body at rest? The body is at rest when it does not change its position. with respect to time. So we say that a body is in motion if it changes its position with respect to time. It is at rest when it, change, when it does not change its position with respect to time. Coming to our questions. When you look through the window, you see everything is passing by. You are right. Even the person who is outside who is standing on the road, he is also right because this rest and motion, it depends upon the observer and its surroundings. Without the observer, there is no meaning to the words rest and motion. And are the walls of your room moving? With respect to earth, they are not moving. But when we take the reference of the sun, you know that earth is a planet revolving around the sun. When earth is moving, we should also move, so walls are moving. So this rest and motion, it depends upon the observer only. Without observer, there is no meaning to rest and motion. Okay, then why don't we feel the motion of the earth? Why don't we perceive the motion of the earth directly? Because we will also be moving along with the earth with the same speed as that of the earth. Let us now try to scientifically define rest and motion. What is the scientific meaning of motion and rest? Motion is a combined property of an object under the observation and the observer. Everything in this world is at rest or in motion. There is no meaning of rest and motion without the observer. There are three types of motion. How many types of motions? There are three types of motions. One is the translatory motion. Second one is the rotatory motion. And third one is oscillatory motion. This is the straight line motion. 
translatory motion is a straight line motion rotatory motion is a motion of an object in circular path it is called as a rotatory motion and oscillatory motion is to and fro motion of a body here translatory motion is a straight line motion when a body moves in a straight line we say that the body is in translatory motion now rotatory motion it is the motion of the particles in a circular path with respect to a center or axis of rotation and oscillatory motion is to and fro motion now let us look at the examples for these motions here you can see the vehicles moving on the road they are the vehicles moving on the road they are in translatory motion a man is throwing the ball the ball is moving in a straight line and also when fruits fall from the tree they too follow the translatory motion and the second one is rotatory motion here you can see the blades of a windmill fan they rotate about an axis this is an example of rotatory motion and motion of a top it is also an example then coming to vibratory motion or oscillatory motion the motion of the strings of musical instruments the swing the girl moves forward and backward forward and backward motion or upward and downward motion is called as oscillation the minute differences in between all these motions you will come to know in your higher classes okay let me show you the types of motion here a car is moving a car is moving this car is in translatory motion now children you can see two types of motions here one is a translatory motion another one is a rotatory motion here the tires of the car are rotating so two types of motion you can see and now here this is spinner this motion is called as rotatory motion this is an example for rotatory motion this is an example of rotatory motion and this is a model of pendulum when, when you take this to a side and leave it starts making forward and backward motion these are called as oscillations the to and fro motion of a body is called as oscillation you can see the oscillations and with this only i can show you the circular motion also so this is the circular motion this is the circular motion okay now let me show you the vibratory motion so this is the hacksaw blade these are the vibrations the to and fro motion of a body these are the vibrations this is an example of vibratory motion now next how do you measure time you know we use clocks we use clocks to measure the time we use uh, look at the picture there is analog clock and a digital clock using this we can measure the time the basic unit of time is second in olden days when these clocks were not invented people used to measure the time using the sand clocks water clocks and a uh, um, uh, sundial let me show you an example of model of sand clock this is the model of sand clock this is the model of sand clock okay now let us switch on to our next topic with a small uh, experience which every parent will face at the house now here is a situation of a boy and a father 
the father orders the boy to sit at one place and read till my return i have some work i'll go out and come within few minutes so saying this the father leaves to work this boy children are fully energetic and they are fond of playing games what this boy does he'll go here and there he'll play he'll go into the kitchen he'll go that side this side when the by the time the father reaches home he will be in the same position the father finds him in the same so position and feels very happy he thinks that my son is very obedient but this is not the case okay now how do we relate this situation to our next topic here we are trying to explain distance and displacement distance is the length of the path covered coming to this boy the boy makes random motions so the length of the path covered is called as a distance okay now come next displacement this is the initial position of the boy and after moving here and there again he came and sat in the same position so there is no change in the initial and final positions so displacement is zero so we say that distance is greater than or equal to displacement displacement is nothing but straight straight line motion motion um, mo uh, length of the path in a particular direction so here the displacement is zero but distance can never be zero when is distance equal to displacement suppose this is the shortest path between two points a and b if the object moves in this path only then distance is equal to displacement we denote distance by the letter s yes, and displacement by the letter s yes, with arrow mark on it what does this indicate this indicates that distance is a scalar quantity to describe which only the magnitude is enough and displacement to describe it we need both the magnitude and the direction here we need to specify the direction it is nothing but distance in a particular direction now look at the picture here distance is the total length of the path covered and displacement is the shortest length between the two points now children there are three paths to move from a to b one is a straight line path and the two are the curved paths which path is the shortest one here a straight line path is the shortest one so we call it as a displacement and the length of the two paths curved paths we call them as distance okay and the si unit of this distance is meter and the top of displacement is also meter distance and displacement both are measured in meters okay next speed look at the picture speed is the distance traveled by an object speed is equals to distance by time it is a scalar quantity its si unit is meter per second on the other hand velocity is the distance traveled by the object per unit time in a particular direction velocity is equal to displacement by time this velocity is a vector quantity the si unit of this velocity is also meter per second here when a body travels in a straight line in a particular direction we say that it possesses velocity if it travels in a curved path then we say that body has a speed now look at the next pic here there are two points a and b a cyclist has to choose two point uh, two ways one is a curved path another one is a shortest path that is a straight line path here when we say that suppose the speed of this his cycle is 1 km in 1 minute suppose so he is moving with a speed of 1 km per minute is the speed to men to say that he is he has velocity we have to say he is moving with a speed of 
one kilometer per minute due east, due west, any direction. You need to specify the direction. So, velocity is speed plus direction. It is a velocity. Okay. And in front of the vehicles, we see a speedometer is fixed. In a, for every vehicle, you, will, you can see this speedometer. Speedometer is a gauge that measures and displays instantaneous speed of the vehicle. Instantaneous speed in the sense speed of the vehicle at a particular point of time. And when we raise the accelerator or decrease lower the accelerator, the speed changes. Next, odometer, the digital reading at the center you can see it is the odometer. Odometer is a device which is used to record the distance covered by that vehicle. Okay. Next, uniform motion. When do you say a body is in uniform motion? If it covers, if a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time, we say that the body is in uniform motion. For example, to reach from point A to point B, so it takes so 1 minute time, 1 minute and 1 minute. If it covers 1 kilometer, 1 kilometer, 1 kilometer, then the time interval is same and the distance covered is also same. Then we say that that body is in uniform motion, non-uniform motion. If the body does not cover equal distances in equal intervals of time. Suppose a vehicle is moving, let us take the same example, 1 kilometer in 1 minute, 2 kilometers then 1 kilometer, here the distance covered is not same, then we say that the body is moving with non-uniform motion. Now, let us study this uniform and non-uniform motion in the form of a graph, graphical representation of the motion. Look at this picture, this is a graph of two friends, Divya and Monica who are studying in the same class. After the school, they are leaving for their homes, which lie on the either side of the school. Now, let us first study the motion of Divya. You can see in one minute, here to draw the distance time graph, we have to take time on x axis and distance on y axis and appropriate scale you have to write. Here the scale is on x axis, 1 centimeter is equal to 1 minute and on y axis 1 centimeter is equal to 100 meters. Now, Divya in 1 minute she covered 100 meters, in 2 minutes she covered 200 meters, 3 minutes 300 meters. Likewise, she reached her home in 12 minutes covering 1200 meters. Here the time interval is equal and the distance covered is also equal. Okay. So, we say that Divya is moving with uniform motion and the graph of her motion is a straight line passing through the origin. Now, let us study the motion of journey of Monica. Journey of Monica. Monica in 1 minute she covered 200 meters, in 2 minutes she covered 400 meters, 
in 3 minutes 600 meters, in 4 minutes she covered 800 meters, thereafter she took rest. She sat for 6 minutes, after sitting for 6 minutes again she started her journey, in the 11th minute she covered 1000 meters and in the 12th minute again 1200 meters. This is her journey, she did not cover equal distances in equal intervals of time. So, we say that her motion is a non-uniform motion. For the non-uniform motion, you will not a, you will not get a graph which is a straight line. It could be a curve or a graph of any shape. The rest period here is shown as a line segment parallel to x-axis. So, Monica, Monica's motion is non-uniform motion, Divya's motion is a uniform motion. Now, let us calculate the average speed of both Divya and Monica. How do you calculate average speed? Average speed is equal to total distance covered by total time taken total distance covered by total time taken. What is the total distance covered by Divya? It is 1200 meters. It is 1200 meters. How much time she took? She took 12 minutes. So, her average speed is, speed is 100 meters per minute. Now, let us calculate the average speed of Monica. Monica also covered 1200 meters in 12 minutes. Her average speed is also 100 meters per minute. The use of this distance time graph is that we can find the slope. How do you find the slope? Slope is equal to y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 that is nothing but distance by time. What is this distance by time called? It is the speed. So, this graph is used to find the instantaneous speed of the object. Now, let us find the speed of Divya and Monica in fourth minute, fourth minute of their journey. So, in Divya's speed, instantaneous speed in fourth minute, she covered 400 meters, 400 meters in 4 minutes. So, her journey is 100 meter per minute, ok. Now, Monica, Monica's instantaneous speed in fourth minute, after 4 minutes she covered 800 meters. 800 meters in 4 minutes that is equals to 200 meter per minute ok. So, this is the slope of Divya and Monica. It, it is instantaneous speed, it changes from time to time. The instantaneous, the slope of the Monica in the for the period of rest is 0 ok. So, like this using the distance time graph we can find the instantaneous speed of the body. Ok, let us move on to our next topic that is acceleration. Acceleration is nothing but it is a rate of change of velocity. Acceleration is denoted by the letter A, it is equal to velocity by time that is v bar by t. Its SI unit is meter per second, by second is meter per second square of acceleration. When do you say that body is in acceleration? When its speed increases we say that body is in acceleration. When its speed decreases we say that it is in deceleration. For example, a train approaching the station slowly its uh, speed decreases when it reaches the platform it will become 0. So, we say that the train is moving with deceleration ok. Now, a train leaving the station slowly its speed increases from 0 to maximum then we say that it is moving with acceleration. 
now when a body is moving in a straight line suppose its uh, speed is uh, 30 km per hour after reaching the destination also 30 km per hour then we say that this body does not possess any acceleration because it is moving with a constant speed now when it takes a linear curvy linear motion here after reaching here also its uh, speed uh, velocity is 30 km per hour then now there is a change in acceleration because though the speed is constant its direction changes that is why we say that this body possesses acceleration how do you find the acceleration suppose that is a point a and b a body is there whose initial velocity is denoted by the letter u it is 0 meter per second after that time t is equals to 5 second it reaches here its final velocity v is equals to 10 meter per second what is this acceleration acceleration a is equals to v minus u by t that is 10 minus 0 by 5 is equals to 2 meter per second square is acceleration okay now the relationship between initial velocity final velocity acceleration displacement and time is given in the form of equations we call those equations as equations of motion first equation of motion is v is equals to u plus at second equation of motion is s is equals to ut plus half at square and third equation of motion is v square minus u square is equals to 2 as how do you get the first equation we get the first equation from acceleration formula v a is equals to v minus u by t implies v is equals to u plus at and second equation of motion from average velocity v plus u by 2 is equals to s by t here substituting v is equals to ut in this equation we get u plus u plus at by 2 is equals to s by t this implies that 2u plus at into t by 2 is equals to s s is equals to 2ut by 2 plus at square by 2 cancelling 2 and 2 you will get ut plus half at square so this is the second equation of motion now we can also derive the third equation of motion again from average velocity formula s by t a is equals to v minus u by t t is equals to v minus u by a so v plus u by 2 is equals to s by v minus u by a we can write v plus u into v minus u is equals to 2 as this is in the form of the identity a plus b into a minus b which is nothing but a square minus b square so v square minus u square is equals to 2 as this is the third equation of motion so children today what we have learnt we have learnt that motion is relative there are three types of motion speed is a scalar velocity is a vector time distance graph of a uniform motion is a straight line passing through the exa passing through the origin and that of a non uniform motion is not a straight line rather it is a curve or a graph of any shape next slope of the time distance graph line is a instantaneous it shows the instantaneous speed of the body then acceleration is the rate of change of velocity and last one is the equations of motion we have three equations of motion v is equals to u plus at second one s is equals to ut plus half at square and the third equation of motion is v square minus u square is equal to 2as okay next to children project you do this project illustrate the race between the rabbit and the tortoise in the form of a graph and derive the equations of motion that's all for today thank you one and all